Look at that. And the cat's helping. <laughs> hey, Mark, what are you doing? Hey. <laughs> you're saying you're territory, not staying mine, all right? Feels <laughs> good. Let's do one more. Hi, I'm Matt Moran, and welcome to Kitchen Tales. There's nothing I like more than catching up with mates while I cook for them in my kitchen, where all the best stories are told. Yeah, right. Give me your hat. There we go, like that. There you go. <laughs> Even Matt Moran makes mistakes. Makes mistakes, mistakes I do. Time. No! <laughs> so join us in the kitchen. I'm looking forward to sharing their kitchen tales with you. It's better than I thought, actually. Look at that, and the cat's helping. <laughs> my next guest is Matt Wright. Outback Wrangler and Croc Lover. Let's face it, anyone that has pet crocodiles must love crocodiles. We are great mates and he's possibly the biggest alpha male I've ever met. We often hang out up north Darwin. He's got this great resort in the Tui Islands. Uh, we go fishing, four-wheel driving. In fact, I'm going to take him on a little bit of an adventure in my backyard. I've got a new Ford Ranger, FX4 Max, and we're going to go for a spin. Matty. Matty, how you going, mate? <laughs> Good buddy. All my Good animals are waiting for you. How you going? They, <laughs> must, smell, they must smell crocodile on you. Look at them. They're just... This is Marvin there, I, think, I think they smell the cooking. Do they? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. How are you, buddy? You well? Good, mate. Good. Mate, grab a seat. Jack. Mate, a couple of things I always remember when I'm with you is... Uh, good food. Yeah, of course. Barramundi, of course. Fresh because food. That's what we do. Fresh, <laughs> fresh food. You know, I love that story. Whenever you want to go and get a, a good feed of seafood, yeah. you just go out and catch it yourself, whether it's barramundi or yeah. mud crab. And, and I've been crabbing with you. Um, Did you catch yourself? <laughs> Look where I am. I wish I could, but well, no, you not just not. Just a line off the, off the yeah, balcony here. You, you, you yeah. won't get barramundi though. <laughs> now we've cooked barramundi plenty of times together. We've caught barramundi. In fact, mm. I caught my biggest fish with you up in the Tiwis, where we caught about fifty in about an hour. Um, and there's some great footage <laughs> of you and I. There's a limit on catching barramundi. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of us. A lot of us. So I've got a, a beautiful bit of barra here, and I thought I just could do something really simple. I'm just going to take it off the... It's a good fillet. Off the, yeah, it is a good fillet. It's not as fresh as what we catch, but, you know, it's not too bad. You can see it's got nice fat in there too. Yeah. All right. You were telling me, and I had no idea about, about this, that you went vegan when you were six years old. A vegetarian. A vegetarian. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like, yeah. you know, an alpha male like yourself. You know, <laughs> I wasn't at six. <laughs> probably not, but I can imagine you as a six-year-old kid in, into anything and everything. Yeah. You I, would have been a nightmare for your mother. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I went that way, but um, mum was a naturopath and grew up just eating healthy tucker. And yeah, for some reason, it. I just didn't eat meat. Wow. No, no, like mum ate, ate meat, my sister ate meat, but I never did. My dad ate meat. Yeah, right. My um, kids often threaten to go vegetarian because they just know that it would upset me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was when I went to the army, I had no choice. I was like, time to eat meat again. So you're, you're vegetarian for that long? Yeah, up to about 20, 21. Mm. Unbelievable. I just would never have pictured that about you. Um, so we're going to do something really simple. It's pretty much uh, just barramundi pan fried in breadcrumbs. I'll make a little dressing, we'll keep that for later. Yeah. And uh, I've got a real treat over here, a bit of uh, Wagyu brisket. And it reminds me of the story that when uh, one of the most beautiful spots on Earth, Earth we're up in the Kimberleys, we, we camped and we went out and got a, a wild steer. Yeah. We butchered it, took the short ribs off, a bit of tail. We barbecued the, the ribeye. <laughs> and I remember fresh, fresh beef. Mate, it was so fresh, but I remember we put it into um, like a camp oven and poured a little bit of, I think it was beer and red wine. Mate, that, was your, that was your job on the trip, was it? My job. I, we, we got the beef, you had to cook it. And, and, <laughs> it and was we amazing. came back at two o'clock after we had a few beers that night and, um, <laughs> and it couple. was just falling off the bone. And it was just, I just remember it vividly and how beautiful it was. And I also remember the same story where there was a couple of city blokes with us. <laughs> and I don't know how you did it, but you caught a snake on the way to the waterhole. <laughs> it was pitch black. And you, you, you've shown them all and you let it go in the waterhole and you said, no, 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 it's not poisonous, it's not venomous, it's fine. <laughs> and then about half an hour later, the snake's <laughs> kind of crawling around and you go, oh, shit, wait there. I, I think I got it wrong. <laughs> they, all, they all tried to get out of the waterhole yeah. so bloody quick. It freaked them all out and, and that was when we had the beautiful... Uh, 
the beautiful beef on the bone. So I've got some brisket that I'm going to smoke later on for you. But these ones, really simple. I've got uh, a little bit of flour, some panko crumbs. You know what a panko crumb is? Yeah, I know what panko oh, you do? is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do know yeah, that. Yeah. I, do, I do my fish in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, I probably taught you that when I was up there. Yeah, you probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I think and uh, what I'm going to do is just something really simple. I'm just going to mix up a couple of eggs. Uh, sometimes I don't like using flour first, and the reason being with the panko, and I breadcrumb a lot of things, I tend to put a little bit of parmesan in there. Yeah, but right. A lot of people um, don't like fish and parmesan or fish and cheese. They think that the that that seafood and again. cheese doesn't go, especially Italians. I sort of tend to fight that a little bit, but it'll just help it stick a little bit, a little bit more. So you got parmesan in there now? No, I don't. I can put a bit in there. You like parmesan cheese? Yeah. Mate, I'm going to do it. Yeah, Stuff what everyone else says. Yeah, let's try it. It just um, lets it bind a little bit better. Great. Right, yeah, so I'll just grab a bowl, mm -hmm. put my panko in, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to grate a small amount. And I won't use the flour then. Yeah, right, yeah. Because the cheese will stick better to the fish. I've, ne I've never, ever heard of it. Really? Mate, this is... You know, this is why well, you're here. Well, that's, you know, that's why I come down here to it's get a few tips off. off and a whiskey. Maddie, Maddie. Yeah, uh, and a whiskey. All right, so I'll just put a little bit of that there. I'm going to grab some good Aussie salt. Mate, and salt to me is kind of like... I um, have heard of salt so before. You have heard of salt. <laughs> <laughs> have you had the Olsen salt? No. It's no, the best. Yeah? Yeah. Family owned. Yeah, right. They're Aussie owned. Where are they based? Mate, they're out of South Australia. Oh, perfect. All good things come out of SA. That's right. You were born in South Australia. I forget that. I forget that. Yeah. yeah. Right, so I'm just going to drop that in in the egg. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm just going to crumb them in the panko with a little bit of parmesan just to, you know, sort of make it stick. And uh, I'm just going to turn that on. And uh, I'm going to make a little dressing. You know, you think of fish and chips, you think of tartare. Yeah. I'm just going to do a, uh, a quick dressing of just chopped parsley. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of uh, some capers. Mm -hmm. It's love, like a tartare love, anyway. I love capers. And um, I'm just going to put some lemon juice and olive oil. Chop that in half. Not too coarse. So Not next time you're up, this is the this is our go-to. I might even just put it on the Tiwi menu. You can do that. Hey? Um, a bit of panko and uh, parmesan. We were on the Tiwi Islands, not at your resort, before we had that. And um, we did some fish fingers, I think, fish and chips was one that, day. Was that, was that, fresh, a, that was fresh barramundi. Up at the Johnson River? Yeah. Yeah. And good fishing this time. Great fishing right now, yeah. yeah. Big wet season. Huge wet season. The barra are um, in full force at the moment. Are they? Yeah, million dollar barra will be going off, I reckon, in the next couple of years. Really? They're really sort of ramping that up, yep. So, if so, you love your fishing and you want to win a million bucks, mate, I want it's a place to go. I need a million bucks. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> so, I'm just going to, a little bit of oil, I'm just going to pan fry these guys. And the dressing is just going to be parsley, capers, lemon juice. Mm -hmm. and olive oil so you know whenever you've got sort of a, a crumb base or a batter you need a little bit of acidity so the lemon juice always goes well with fish these little barramundi bites one time there we'll, we'll say same sort of trip you and i did yeah and we uh, did the same we got a killer we got a bit of beef but i took all the fat off it yeah and i found an old wok in chinaman's or um in a vietnamese cooking shack we yeah. got the wok bought up all the fat and then we caught a heap of mangrove jack yeah right. And we cooked all the all the fish or the mango jack in the in the fat of the um, of the uh, cow that we. That yeah we right. Got. And beautiful, isn't it? Delicious. Yeah. yeah. So definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of our, our grandparents grew up on on dripping, which is just beef fat. Yeah. On bread. Well, that's what gives it a lot of things flavour. Yeah. 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 I know I put a little bit of olive oil in the start with, but you know what? Olive oil is good too. Olive oil is good for you. Yeah. You can see that golden brown. Oh. See how the, the cheese just makes it stick a little mm -hmm. bit better. Mm hmm. And um, you know. I know that cheese and seafood, everyone goes on about it, but you know what, rules are meant to be broken. 
That's not as though <laughs> you're, <laughs> <not so>, you're, <laughs> you're never broken a rule. I, I, live, I live my life by that rule. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so a little bit of chopped parsley. Yeah. Um, throw in some capers. Grab a couple of lemons. So this is your uh, sauce? This is my sauce that's going to go to the top. Mm -hmm. So rather than sort of have a fattiness of a of mayonnaise base, tartare, that's a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Um, and let's face it, I've just put a heap of cheese in that now too. So, <laughs> so we need it a bit lighter. Yeah. So how many pet crocodiles do you have? Oh, I think 17, maybe. And a lot of them are um, uh, either been injured or... Yeah, well, or... they all come out of parks, people's backyards. Um, they're pretty much all the crocodiles that are going to get destroyed. So yeah, parks right. and wildlife catch them and there's no home for them. So I'm continually putting more pens in and expanding the place because... Yeah, you know, crocodile population now in, the, in Australia is quite high. It's a healthy population. Yeah. Um, but uh, Parks and Wildlife is still catching, you know, three hundred or so out of the harbour every year. Is that right? Yeah. And what do they do with those? They usually go to farms or the yeah, parks. Right. Yeah. And if they can't take them, then then you'll take them. Yeah. 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 And um, how's your your? I know your your pet one. I've met him a few times. Tripod, who's a massive crocodile, he's fat as fat as any. Yeah, he's, he's not getting any skinnier. He but might need a diet. He might need a diet. <laughs> a but the fish one, diet. The one that I love, um, which I think you love probably the most, too, is Bone Crusher. Yeah, he's cool. Which is just, and you know, I I just see it, and I just think one day, oh geez, I hope he doesn't grab you. But <laughs> I, I know he's like a, he's like a pet dog. Yeah, he's quiet. He's very quiet. He's very um, reserved, I guess, as, as far as a crocodile goes. But, you know, he's handicapped. He's, he's lost half his jaw. I know he's lost half his jaw. He's lost he, one of his eyes. He's lost some of his tail. He he's... could still grab you. Um, I actually thought about cooking crocodile for you. But I just thought, you know. There's a, there's a sort of unwritten rule with me. It's like, no. I don't eat the crocodile. And it won't eat, it won't eat me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I suppose, but then again, those barramundis are getting pretty big. You know? They are getting big, but... Yeah. You, you might have to stop eating barramundis soon. <laughs> that won't happen. No, it won't happen. The best barramundi I've ever eaten was the stuff that we caught, that salt water. Yeah, straight and out of salt. And it just turned me so much because yep. that was, it was a firm fish. It was just beautiful. Well, was that sort of first time you'd had that actually fresh? That fresh, yeah, yeah yes. 100%. No, it's, you, you know it too, because I, I buy in a lot of barra for our camp and stuff yeah, as well. Yeah. And um, you sort of know pretty soon where, where it's come from yeah. just from tasting it. So, I'm just going to let that cook a little yeah. bit longer. But if it is, if it's um, fresh, yeah, you can't, can't go that. past it. Eh? But it's, it's a lot firmer fish, the, the salt water, it's, you know, wild stuff compared yeah. to any of the, the farm stuff. Yeah. You know, and I've been up there many times with you and, you know, seeing, seeing the top end, and the way you see it in a helicopter is bloody just so beautiful. Oh, beautiful. This, this time of the year with the waterfalls and it's green. Yeah. It's just yeah. magic. You know, it does get a bit warm at times, but you keep moving, keep the airflow happening. And yeah. It's good. Just keep the aircon in the Ford Ranger. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to do that. These little little barramundi bites. I'm just going to... My lemon juice. I did put salt in that, didn't I? Can't yeah, remember. yeah, you did. Oh, you put salt somewhere. I did, didn't I? I don't know if you put it on the fish or in I the dressing. A little bit of salt in the dressing. Mm -hmm. Always a great way to finish a dish, Matty. Salt. Bit of salt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's usually where I start. <laughs> Look at that. They're good. Mm. Mm. Fresh and clean. Mm. You get a little bit of the pumps, and the pumps is fresh, but I'll tell you what, it just keeps that, um, it really keeps the, the beautiful coating on it because it melts a little bit and it gets the panko crumbs, but that, geez, that's good, isn't it? I do like that, I do like with the pumps, I know. Yeah, it's good, huh? Mm. So all those Italians out there that knock me all the time. Yeah. Done well with the fish, mate. Mm. How do you know how long to cook that for, like just? I'll either overdo it or undo it. <laughs> It'll be half raw. I don't know how far to get away from a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> you stay in your territory and I'll stay in mine, all right? <laughs>
a fair slab of meat. But it's a slab of meat. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The great thing about brisket is I, I, I smoke it first. Yeah. I've got a, a, an oven outside I'll show you. And uh, you can see that's why yeah. so it's got a lot of marbling in it. Beautiful. Um, I leave the fat on it because yeah. it renders down anyway. Yeah. And um, the great thing about brisket is you can cool it down and slice it and have it on sandwiches the next day. But I'm going to smoke, well, this one I'm going to smoke for us later. Yeah. I've had one there smoking for seven hours now. So I smoke it with a bit of um, wine barrel wood and some hickory. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then after about an hour of smoking it, I wrap it all up in foil and I just let it cook in its own juices. So it's gonna make a slaw and, um, and, uh, and then just have like a brisket sandwich. To me, I don't think there's anything better. Ah. I'm gonna make a quick slaw, Matty, really easy. Um, I like to see, I like to see purple cabbage. Mm -hmm. That's just been grated. Mm. And um, you know, that big trip that we did Years ago, when we got the helicopters and we flew down to Broome, yeah, you know, and just camped and <sighs> we should line, line up another one of them. Yeah, that's that's the best one I've ever that gone on. Done. We might we might not find the hot rocks this time. We'll find a better spot than that. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you know, talk about hot. So we camped uh, on the top of a waterfall on these rocks, and it's been forty degrees, and our our tents just got so hot. In fact, we nearly cooked ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't cool down overnight, and no. the waterfall sort of stopped flowing. Right. So a bit of slaw, a bit of apple, a bit of carrot, a bit of cabbage, um, and I've got some mayonnaise here, some horseradish. Just give it a bit of heat mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit of creme fraiche, just to give it a little bit of sourness and, and I'm going to mix that around. Yeah, right. Pull that's that in there. This is the whole... That's the mayonnaise part yeah. of it. Yeah. So a bit of coleslaw. Yeah. Now I've got some brisket that I prepared earlier. Um, I'm going to go and get it. I did this earlier, mm -hmm. um, earlier this morning. It was the other half of that brisket. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud of oh, wow. what I've done. Look at that. You can see a darkness in it. Look, yep. look, at look at that. It's like a piece of gelatin. Yeah, it's right. Jelly. Oh, just falls apart too, falls doesn't apart, it? Falls apart, yep. And how long did you cook that for? Mate, that was in there for seven hours. Yeah, right. So if I was sitting here waiting for that to cook for seven hours and a few whiskeys, so it might be a bit messy by the time it comes out. Well, I would be anyway. But this is the, the top part of the brisket, which I love. I'm just going to cut a big chunk of that off. Look at that. See that there? Yeah. All the juice coming out. Yeah. I'll just give you a little, a little tester. Mm, that? So what we're going to do... So I'm going to wrap this up in some uh, con foil mm -hmm. and um, we're going to go for a bit of a spin. Yeah. And I'm going to take you down to the cliffs down at Clovelly. Might be, might be blowing a bit of a gar down there, but I think we'll be all right. I think we make a sandwich. Right. Right. And the stormy um, weather. I'll show you my backyard <laughs> and, um, and have a, a beautiful brisket sandwich. Sounds good, man. All right, Look, buddy. I'll get delicious. this packed up and we'll, yeah. we'll go. Yeah, the con foil trays are fantastic. Great alternative to plastic. In fact, I use them in all the restaurants and home here also, and especially if you're going to go away on a road trip, um, it keeps it nice and fresh. <laughs> Tell you what, this car, the Ford range has been fantastic um, at the farm. Yeah. yeah? Because we've been so wet and you just can't get around it and this has been fantastic. You're gonna have to get me up to the farm. I'll make check it out. You've gotta come up. Squash that down. Don't have to share it. <laughs> Put your topping on. Yeah. And that's it, mate. Should we get out? Mm-hmm. Get into the uh, into the weather? Yeah, can't go get in the car too, Daddy. Mate. No. <laughs>